Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today's devotions. We're going to have a great devotions today, and we've got a lot of things to take and go over. As you can see, we're this whole room is completely empty. There's nothing left in it, and um, we're just going over what all needed to be done today. We were going to take and uh, we have to patch the hole into my office and the hole in the floor today, and then we're going to start painting in here. Uh, hopefully, we can get this all painted by tomorrow. And I'm going after the new flooring or the new uh, subfloor for this today. And um, we've got one more piece of drywall we got to pick up there. We got our new truck yesterday, and um, we're anxious to take and use that. But uh, we've got a lot of things to take and pray for this morning. And um, uh, my daughter, Denise, was in a real bad car accident yesterday on her way home from work. And uh, she's pretty well banged up. We need to pray for her. We need to pray for Dana. He's still up at Mayo um, Hospital. We need to pray for um, Nick. Uh, he had uh, knee replacement. And we need to pray for um, Tuck. Tuck is at his doctor now. And uh, so we got a lot of people we need to pray for today. And so let's go to the Lord and pray, and then we'll get started. Father, thank you so much for this morning. Thank you for all that you've done for us. Thank you for allowing us to have devotions. Father, we thank you so much for loving us. Thank you for all you've done for us. Thank you for this little church. We just pray, Lord, that we can get this all remodeled. It'll be for your honor and your glory. We love you. We thank you for what you've done for us. We just pray now for Denise, Lord. We pray that you'd be with her. I just pray that you lay your healing hand upon her and, uh, and this accident that she was in and that they'd be able to get their car replaced. And Father, I just pray also for Nick as he had uh, knee replacement done yesterday. I pray that you take and be with him, uh, guide and direct him. We pray also for <clears throat> Dana as he's still up at Mayo Hospital. I pray that his tests had all come up negative and that he'd be home with us uh, today. And Father, we think of uh, the many others that we need to pray for. We just uh, uh, can't thank you enough for, for loving us and being with us and be a tuck as he's at the doctor today. And I pray that the um, doctors know exactly what to do for him. Father, we thank you for all you've done for us. I just pray now that we'll get something out of this devotion today that'll be for your honor and glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now, a person who runs a food bank has to be real uh, inquisitive or has to be able to do things differently. And as you notice my pulpit today, I've got milk crates. And uh, so, anyway, that's what we're going to be using for a pulpit today. Um, because there's nothing else in here. And uh, so you'll have to take and bear with me probably today, tomorrow, and Friday. But it's going to be exciting to see how this place is all transforming and, and how it's going to uh, be um, go back into the way that it should be. And, and we're excited about it. We're excited to see what God is going to do with this place. And um, so, but let's get into today's devotions. Yesterday we talked about uh, what we need to do to fight and how that we need to fight, that uh, we need to take and uh, meet our, our enemy head on and that we don't want to turn our back on him and we don't want to uh, 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 go the other way. Well, today we're going to take a look at the armor in which we need to fight with. You know, God is very explicit uh, about what we need to do and why we need to do it. Now, the Apostle Paul, when he wrote to the church of Ephesus, uh, he wanted them to realize that it, Ephesus was a military town, and so they knew what he was talking about when he, uh, when he wrote this letter to them. But if you go to Ephesians chapter 6, and we're going to be starting at verse number 14 today, it says, Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to uh, quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. I don't know if you can hear the echo in here like I can, but boy, it is really echoing in here with nothing in this room. And, uh, but... Um, just bear with me, and we're going to get through this devotional today. But here we see that Paul is talking to the uh, church of Ephesus about what they need for their spiritual warfare. 
He wants them to understand that it's no different fighting our spiritual battles than going to war and fighting in a war. They needed the same type of, of um, um, armor and things like that as if they were going to war and fighting an enemy because that's what we are is we're fighting an enemy. But if you take and you look at what Paul says, here again he says, stand in verse 14. He doesn't want people to lay down. He doesn't want people to sit down. He doesn't want people to be on their knees. He wants them to stand straight up and go forward into battle. And uh, he says, stand. And uh, so that's what we need to realize is that we need to stand on the word of God. We need to stand and we need to realize that God's word is true and we need to stand on that word. Not only that, but he goes on to say, he says, uh, uh, have your loins gird about with truth. Now the loins, believe it or not, are, the, are your calves or your thighs right here. Those are your loins. And he says, I want you to have them gird about with truth. Well, what does that mean, gird about with truth? We need to know what the Bible says. We need to know the truths that are in God's word. And we need to be able to take and present them to people so that they can be saved. We need to understand that we need to gird our, our loins about with truth. Now think about the loins here. You know that this area of your body has your femur bone in it. That's the largest bone in your body. Not only that, but some of the strongest muscles in your body are in your thighs. And he's saying you need to be strong in your loins. You need to be strong with the word of God. You need to be strong with the truths of God's word. And, uh, uh, and that's what Paul is talking about here. Then he goes on to say, he says, put on the breastplate of righteousness. Okay, that's the part that covers your chest. And um, as I was looking at this, I'm thinking to myself, well, why would he have the breastplate of righteousness? Well, when we get saved, what happens? Jesus comes into our heart. And that's where we receive our righteousness. That's where we receive salvation. And what we need to do is we need to protect that area. We need to protect the area of our heart. After all, if a person gets shot in the heart, you don't last very long and you die. We need to realize that we need to have that breastplate of righteousness on so that we can hide God's word in our heart that we might not sin against him. We need to understand that we need to have our heart and our lungs and everything like that protected so that we always speak the truth about the word of God. We need to understand that <clears throat> people expect us to take and do that. Not only that, but you need to have your feet shod with preparation of the gospel. So what does that mean? That means you need to have your feet protected. You know, I always think of the song, it goes, Oh, be careful, little feet, where you go. Oh, be careful, little feet, where you go. For the Father up above is looking down in love. Oh, be careful, little feet, where you go. <clears throat> with that, we need to understand that we need to be careful about our feet. We need to keep our feet protected so that we do not go places that we should not go. We need to understand that our feet can take us to places that, quite frankly, we should not be there. And we need to keep our feet protected so that we are not um, going to get into trouble. You know, if you think of a, a soldier as they were fighting, one of the places an enemy would go for is the feet. They would try to cripple a person by taking their feet out. If they could take and cripple a person so that they could not stand and they could not fight, they won the war. And uh, so we need to realize that we need to keep our feet covered. We need to watch our feet and wh where we go and and things like that. We need to understand that we need to keep our feet um, <clears throat> uh, in the right places. Not only that, but we also need the shield of faith in verse 16. <clears throat> what was the shield for? The shield was to take and hold it up in front of you 
so that darts and, and arrows and, and spears and different things, as they were coming at you, you could ward them off. You could fight them off. Well, you know, it's the same thing with us. We need to have the shield of faith. We need to have the faith that God can do anything but fail. We need to realize that we need that, that shield of faith in front of us all the time. And we need to be ready <clears throat> when Satan throws his fiery darts at us. Because he's going to. He's going to try to get us any way he possibly can. And we need to be ready to fight off those fiery darts of Satan. You know, so many times we say, oh, I can go through life all by myself. I don't have to worry about Satan. Oh, yes, we do. Once we're saved, Satan wants nothing more than to trip us up. And he will. He'll use every ploy in his book to try to get us tripped up and try to get us to stumble and fall. And we need to realize that we need that shield of faith in front of us all the time. We need to have that shield ready to fight off all of the whales of the devil. <clears throat> Not only that, but we also need to have the helmet of salvation in verse 17. We need to put on the helmet of salvation. Why do we need a helmet? You know, you think of it in a warfare, uh, they're going to take and try to take your head off. They're going to do everything they can to damage your, your skull or damage your head or, or your eyes or whatever. And we need to realize that we need to have our head protected. Everything that's in our head, believe it or not, is what we can use <clears throat> to ward off Satan. You know, let's face it. Many times, the things that go into one ear stays there. They say that <clears throat> we never forget the things that we have learned in the past. And that's so very true. Our brain is much like a huge computer that stores every bit of everything we've ever done, everything we've said, everywhere we have went, and all the thoughts that we've ever had, our brain stores all of that. What we need to understand is we need to protect our mind. We need to protect our head from the things that Satan's going to throw at us. We need to be careful that we don't go onto bad websites. We need to be careful that we don't look at bad magazines. We need to be careful that we don't watch shows on the TV that we shouldn't watch. We need to protect our mind. And that's why we need the helmet of salvation. You know, <clears throat> once we're saved, our mind is different. We want to look on the pure things of God. We want to look on the good things of God. We don't want to look at evil things anymore. We want to protect our mind and our, our thoughts. Not only that, but we also need the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. We need the sword of the Spirit, which is God's Word. God's, you know, the Bible, that's God's Word. That's our sword. That is how we can uh, uh, ward off Satan. <clears throat> As I was doing this, I was thinking of, of Jesus when Jesus was tempted for 40 days and 40 nights by Satan. You know, what did, what did Satan tell him? He says, you're hungry, and if you be the Son of God, have these stones turn into bread. What did Jesus do? Jesus used the word of God to ward him off. Man shall not live by bread alone. You know, what we need to realize is we need to use God's word to fight off Satan. That is our two-edged sword. That is sharper than any sword which will pierce the inside of man. We need to realize that the only way we can fight Satan, the only way we can fight the uh, rulers of darkness is by the word of God. You know, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. You know, if we hide God's word in our heart, you know, guess what? We're not going to want to take in sin against God. You know, I serve a great God. I serve a God of, of all power. And I don't want to disappoint him. I don't want to sin against him. I want him to realize how much I love him and how much I want to serve him. And you know what? I'm going to take his word and I'm going to use it 
to fight off all the wiles of the devil. You know, we can't fight Satan by ourselves. We can't fight off the things that he brings into our lives that are going to cause us to sin without God's word. And we need to realize that God's word is going to help us to get through all of the things that Satan's going to take and throw at us. We need to understand that it's only through God's word that we're going to have victorious and win against Satan. The Bible says the study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. What we need to realize is we need to hide God's word in our heart that we know exactly how to answer when people bring hard questions to us. <clears throat> I've talked to many people over the years and they will ask me different questions about this or that or anything else. And I, just like that, I can come up with verses in the Bible that will take and help me to overcome the questions that they're asking. That's why it's so important for us to always have God's Word with us. And if you don't have a Bible with you, you need to have verses memorized that you can just come out with a verse. You know, the uh, phones now, you, <clears throat> you can have a Bible app on them. But we need to have God's word with us all of the time. You know, um, I look at it this way. I look at, at God's word is part of my body. You know, I have to have that with me all the time in order to get through life. And so do you. You need God's word with you in order to get through life. If not, you're going to lose the battle that's set before you. We all need to realize that we need the full armor of, of God every day. Here about two years ago, I was talking to a man. He said, I just can't fight the battles. I said, well, do you have the armor of God on? He says, well, what do you mean by that? And I took him to Ephesians chapter 6. I said, I want you to read these verses every single morning. Then after you read them, I want you to pray and say, dear God, Help me to have the armor of God on every day. And you know what? He did that. He did that for almost a year. Every single day, he would pray and he would read these verses. He had them memorized. And he would read all these verses every single day. And he would pray and ask God to take and help him to have the full armor of God on. And you know what? His life from there on changed. He was able to fight off Satan. He was able to fight off Satan's fiery darts. He was able to take and win the victory in life that he needed to win. You know, each of us, there's not any of us that can go against Satan by ourselves. We need to have the full armor of God on every single day. You know, you think of a soldier when a soldier is going into battle. Do they put their armor on before they go? Or do they just say, well, you know what? I'm going to leave my bulletproof vest back. I'm not, it's so hot. It's so heavy. I'm not going to take that. Line. In fact, I'm going to leave my helmet back here too. Ah, uh, you know, what do I need a gun for? I'm going to leave that back here too. You know, what we need to realize, they need all of their armor in order to fight the enemy. It's no different with you and I. We need the full armor of God on every day so that we can fight the enemy and we need to win the enemy. You know, we have a, a young man here in the church. Uh, his name is Jacob Burke, and he's in the service now. And we need to pray for him every day that he would put on the full armor of God and that he would keep his life uh, pure before God. So <clears throat> make sure you put the armor of God on every day. Let's go Lord in prayer. Father, thank you so much for today. Thank you for all that you've done for us. I just pray now that we can put on the full armor of God, that we can fight off all the wiles of the devil. Father, I just pray for Jacob, Lord, as he's in the service. I pray that you can be with him. Help him to put on that full armor of God every day. Father, we just thank you so much for loving us. I thank you for the <coughs> church. We just pray for the service tonight. That everything that will be said and done will be for your honor and your glory. We love you. We thank you for what you've done for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Tonight at 6 o'clock out at the windmill, 
we're going to have our midweek service. So if you're in the area and you want to uh, come to church, um, it's going to be at the windmill tonight at 6 o'clock. And so try to be there. And I guarantee you're going to enjoy tonight the study in Revelation. So until tomorrow morning, same time, same place, we, you have a great day today. And uh, we'll talk to you in the morning. God bless. Have a super great day today.